Hello and welcome to this podcast from Blackwell Online. My name is George Miller, and my guest today is Professor both of Mathematics and the Public Understanding of Science at Oxford, Marcus de Sotoy. I went to meet Marcus recently to talk to him about The Music of the Primes, a book which he published originally in 2003, because it's been chosen by Blackwell as one of a hundred titles in their paperbacks of the decade promotion, a celebration of some of the best books to appear so far this millennium. The book is a fascinating journey into the bizarre world of prime numbers. At its heart is an exploration of the Riemann hypothesis about the behaviour of prime numbers, one of the great unsolved problems in maths. As it happens, his 150th anniversary falls this year. There's a million dollar prize on offer for whoever comes up with a proof of the hypothesis, though as you'll hear from the interview, Marcus thinks it unlikely anyone will be claiming the prize any time soon. I began by asking Marcus to tell me about the fascination of prime numbers. I think prime numbers, the fascination of them, is really, really goes to the heart of why mathematics is fascinating. It's not about the applicability, it's about that s- desire to look for pattern and order that I think we all have. It, it's sort of uh, almost one of our human traits that whenever we look at something, we try and find some structure, some order to make sense of the chaos. And the primes are the ultimate challenge. These numbers are the most important in the whole of mathematics. They are our atoms. They're what you build all numbers from. They're our hydrogen and oxygen. Yet when you look at a sequence of numbers, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, and you keep on going, they they just look like random lottery ticket numbers. It's But you know they're so important, there must be something making them tick. And I think what's nice about the story is that you can start with quite a simple problem. Okay, everyone understands what a prime number is. It's a number which can't be divided. Everyone sort of has some idea of patterns, trying to make connections. And there you go, you're you're, you're launched on this journey, on this story. But of course, the story told in the music of the primes shows you that um, to understand these numbers, you have to go on an incredible, epic journey through so many different bits of mathematics and history and personalities. And, And that's what I think brings the book alive. You start somewhere simple and it just opens up into the story of mathematics. There were many things in the book that really stuck with me, but uh, t- two in particular come to mind. One is that there is a bone found in Africa, which is six and a half thousand years old, which may suggest some early awareness of prime numbers. And the other, which was even more astonishing, was that two species of cicada seem to have synchronized their breeding cycles using prime numbers. Say a little bit about what, what those two things say to you. The Ashango bone, um, which has these um, notches on, which are clearly keeping track of some numbers, uh, is an exciting bone, but partly because it, it's so old and also because it seems to have prime numbers on the side. Now, that may just be a coincidence because probably these bones are keeping track of dates, uh, moon cycles and things like this. But I think what is more interesting is the occurrence of these primes in nature, and in particular um, these species of cicada, which have this incredibly strange life cycle. They hide underground um, doing nothing for um, 17 years, and then after 17 years they emerge into the forest, they party away, they eat the leaves, they mate, they lay eggs, then after six weeks they die, and the forest goes quiet again for another 17 years absolutely extraordinary 17 a prime number is it just a coincidence well no there's another species with a 13 year life cycle and another one with a seven year life cycle and what seems to have happened is that um we think there might have been a predator which also used to appear periodically and used to try and time its arrival in the forest to coincide with the cicada now the cicada that had a prime number life cycle found that it could keep out of sync of this predator much better than if it had a non-prime number life cycle. So it seems like the predator died out and these cicadas have been left with prime number life cycles. Now what's intriguing is that this idea was also used um, by the uh, French composer, 20th century composer Olivier Messiaen in the Quartet for the End of Time. He wanted to create a sense of timelessness in this piece, uh, the Liturgy de Cristal, the first movement. Uh, So what he did was to get the piano having a rhythm sequence which was uh, 17 notes long and a harmonic sequence which is 29 notes long. So as the piano plays through and it finishes the rhythmic sequence, it restarts that. It's only about two-thirds of the way through the harmonic sequence. So he uses the same ideas as cicadas to to keep things out of sync such that um, you never really hear the rhythm or harmony mesh 
until you've heard it 17 times 29 times so it's beautiful i think that's what's so lovely mathematics is everywhere it's um on you know sort of uh, early bones it's in nature but it's also in music and art and the architecture that surrounds us well this the cicadas to me raised that question of whether mathematics is out there as it were whether it underlies things or whether it's a it's a sort of mental object that that human beings have created and it, the cicadas would suggest that it's out there i think that mathematics really is the way the the world is ordered so you see mathematics everywhere in nature the the fibonacci numbers coming up with the way that things grow natural shapes like hexagons occurring in the the beehive you know these aren't just random there are mathematical reasons why the bee is choosing the hexagon for its hive so i think that it's also the way our brain is programmed in order to try and make a sense of the world we're, we're looking for structure and order and that's what mathematics is about I think people think that mathematics is about sort of long division and to lots of decimal places and multiplication and, and but that's arithmetic what mathematics is about and what the heart of the music of the primes is about is looking for patterns and that's what we need to do in order to make sense of the world around us now the Riemann hypothesis about which is the, the focus of the book really hasn't been proved but for for normal working purposes it has been taken to, it seems to operate well enough. And in other science, you say, you know, that would be good enough. In mathematics, it seems not to be good enough. Why is that? Because there are so many cases where if you assume something was true and built a tower on top of it, then suddenly you get a surprise. Mathematics is so full of surprises that just... Uh, lots of evidence for something uh, when you're talking about the infinite if you've done a, a million 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 cases if you're talking about infinitely many cases then uh, that's still uh, an infinitesimal fraction of that so so i think one has to be very careful in mathematics um not to be seduced by empirical evidence and there's some things which are very close to the riemann hypothesis which turned out to be false so i think it's a, a real lesson that's why we're so obsessed with proof because we don't want to build our our beautiful palace on top of foundations which could suddenly disappear and mathematics as i say is full of surprises so you never know the riemann hypothesis is is only just true if it is true one of the epigraphs in the book says that if the riemann hypothesis is proved it won't be proved by a computer or with, or with a computer and that may surprise some people because i think we we're used to the newspaper stories about a bigger prime number has just been uh, unveiled. So what is it about this problem that means it's not amenable to solution by computer and indeed unlikely that it will be solved by a computer? I think it's the difference between the finite and the infinite. Um, if you're looking at just one prime and asking whether that's is it really a prime? You look at one number, is it really a prime? Well, that's a finite problem which a computer will be able to access because you've just got to keep on dividing by everything which is below that number. But when you're trying to look for a pattern in the primes or prove that there is no pattern there, that's talking about the infinite. And there a computer is lost because it can only make a finite process. It might be a tool on the way to to a proof. And certainly experimental evidence done by a computer has shown us interesting similarities between patterns in primes or the zeros of the Riemann zeta function and patterns in energy levels in physics and the computer has been helpful in saying yeah this looks like a genuine link but it's not going to be helpful in actually proving the thing and I think that computers are very good at finite processes humans are very good at spotting patterns in infinite data finally Marcus on on the music of the primes perhaps I can ask when you wrote the book which I guess is about five years ago now you said that we were probably about two steps away from solution to the Riemann hypothesis and I wondered are we still two steps or have we moved any closer no I think we're two still two steps away I, I think um, uh, it's interesting because 2009 is the anniversary the 150th anniversary well of um, Darwin and the origin of species but actually Riemann's paper on prime numbers um, was published in the same month November 2009 so it's interesting you know what, what's the progress 150 years on uh, and I would say since the writing of that book no big ideas new big ideas have come up some interesting new things about primes have been proved for example terence tau um, won a fields medal in the last round for some uh, stunning things about primes but not about the riemann hypothesis so we may have to wait till the 200th anniversary to see one of those <laughs> two big ideas being proved